students, welcome to this class. We're going to paint this pumpkin. I'm going to show you my test piece. I wanted to create a test piece so I could decide and I still didn't decide what I prefer better, but this is a wax stick and I used a wax stick here. And then I used masking fluid for the hay over here. So you could use masking fluid over here as well. And why would you wanna do that? Well, we have some nice highlights over uh, the left side of this pumpkin and it'll be nice to highlight some of the hay over here so the grass and so i'm going to use it for the wheat here so just quick lines very fast just to have some highlighted hay and then since i'm already using it is there anything i can add on top here so let's see i could add some masking although i feel like i want to just use that wax stick so once more this is just a wax stick like a candle what i'm going to do first is uh, remove some of the sketch lines this is my kneaded eraser because once you place some of the wax stick this is permanent it does not come off so i don't want to see like sketch lines in this area right here so i'm just gently touching paper and this is what i'm going to do i'm just going to place a little bit it's if you see like I'm, I'm placing it like almost flat so I'm kind of going between these lines so I don't go like over the lines all right so that's all I'm gonna so this is my long quill size four this is my songbird quilt brush you can do this even with a flat brush if you prefer what I'm gonna do now is quickly dilute my colors with water and then I'll come back to it one more time the first color I want to grab is my Imi Desalone Yellow. I want this paint to actually spread, but I don't want it to be spread too much. So I want this to to have like a, to feel like milk like ratio, like a milky consistency. A little more water here. There you go. So there is my Imi Desalone Yellow. Some of that is a yellow. A little bit of quin red. Now that's too much. So if that happens, just go back and grab some more of the Imi Desalone Yellow. Now you could add a little bit of cobalt blue here for the highlights just keep that in mind and it's just i'll keep it a little more simple for this one um one more thing is that where you apply it right so find like the most yellow orange like areas try to stay away from the most highlighted parts you could grab a little bit of blue tiny bit of red and what you could do is mark for yourself right here that there is a blue, like the highlight, I'm sorry, the highlights are here. You can grab a little more of that red, for example, and just this, these are the areas that have these highlights as well, right? So mm -hmm. I grab some uh, more of the yellow, more water here, so it feels more like milk, and then the same colors. And I'm going back actually toward the same areas. It will be a moment later when I will start decreasing the amount of water mixed with my paint. It's just not that moment yet. More red. This should be still well, like a, I say milk-like ratio. Although feel it out because maybe if your paper is a little, feels dry, more dry than before, drier, then go for like a half and half like ratio. So I'm gonna grab this iso yellow, a little more iso yellow this time actually. Iso yellow will make it really bright orange. So I do want that color. It's just, I don't wanna just paint with the iso yellow only because I want to show different shades of that yellow or orange over the pumpkin. Now before I continue all this I want to grab a little bit, a little bit, very slight blend this cobalt blue with some of the quin red. Please I'll notice I did not clean my brush okay I did not clean the brush and I'm just gonna this this is like a very gentle shadow just on the bottom mostly and building it upward a little bit upwards but I, i'm not going for that main cast shadow it's just so it's going to be easier for me to come back to this area right here okay and another thing what we can do before we go too deep with this i'm going to clean the brush and what i'm going to do is actually grab a little bit of that burnt sienna just a little bit maybe some Van Dyke brown With a quinacridone red, 
I what I want to do is kind of like separate these parts of the uh, pumpkin. I feel like this is a little too dark for this part. I'm going to go like lower here. Just the softer shadows overall. And then those lines that we see between in between. So I'll probably just switch to a smaller brush actually because this is too big now. But what I should do really is grab some of this Quin Red. There is my cobalt blue. You can also grab uh, Indig, I'm sorry, the uh, follow blue. And don't forget the Quinacridone Red, some of the yellow we used. Don't overly mix the, the colors because you do want to see the separation of colors. I just grabbed some more blue and go for the bottom, just the bottom to add these initial cast or not the yeah cast shadows but like they're coming from the bottom the, so the soft shadows but we're not done yet because I want to show you like the lifting part that we're gonna do and I don't want to get stuck too much here either the shadows right like I'm talking about leaving the shadows for later but I am adding these these softer shadows I just want to have something that I come back to a little more so I'm waiting and some areas like over here are actually pretty good to lift colors. So for example here, this is my round two songbird details. So just have a smaller, stiffer brush, slightly stiffer, like a medium stiff. And now I lift, I clean my brush, I wipe it on a towel, and then I lift again. So I want to have a clean brush when I lift. Now, when you look at these uh, the sections of the pumpkin, you got to figure out like what area is actually highlighted. So if you think of this little section as one piece, then it's this side right here before this shadow that needs to be lifted. So you need to kind of study quickly, where do I actually lift the colors? So again, if I decide this is one little section here, right? And I have this little shadow in between these sections. Well, if this is my hole, then the shadow is on the inside, right next to this cast shadow. So you also think, have to think about the placement of these cast shadows. So I'm cleaning my brush, wiping on a towel. And then again, this is one little section. So it's gonna be on the inside, right next to this shadow. This is where I'm lifting. Sometimes it's confusing where we're lifting, where we need to lift. But in this case, it's really important to lift in that area, in those areas. Now the same thing here. This is one little section here, one slice, right, of this pumpkin. It's the inside, but right next to this sketch line here. All right. I think I'm good with lifting. I feel like maybe one more area which would be like helpful to lift right here. So what do you want to do is wet the handle. So we're going to wet the entire handle. We didn't wet this part of the pumpkin over here, so that's why we can paint this right away. So I'm going to start with the yellow. So there is leftovers of my Give me this along yellow. Eyes are yellow. So left side is much lighter and it's highlighted some of that quinacridone red so it became more orange-like, which you can kind of see in the reference. It becomes more orange-like. Is to grab the same colors, yellow, red, plus starting some of these blues. And now we can start applying it here, but I actually want to show there's some blue. So this is my um, follow blue. I could just go again with a cobalt blue, like I was painting the pumpkin, and it becomes like a purple. And just apply it toward the darkest areas you can see. I keep thinking, do I want Van Dyke Brown? I actually do. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that Van Dyke Brown too. Not that I need to but I feel like it would be nice to have a little bit of that as well. All right, my friends, so thank you so much for your time. And just as usual, please let me know if you have any questions. Mm -hmm.